Welcome to Blank Space, and welcome to the 2018 Riverbend Film Festival. This is a very special event. I'm glad you all came out on a Friday morning. Um, my name is Carrie Lee Glenn Kendall. I'm one of the entertainment coordinators. We have such an incredible team that's been able to put um, a fa fabulous fest together for you today. Um, I just want to uh, say thank you so much to Emily Evans. Um, and also the Goshen College ASL team that's come out to sign for us and interpret for us for the next couple of days here at the festival. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much to Anna Weed and Blank Space so much for hosting for us today. Now today is our second day of the fest and the rest of today um, and all day tomorrow from 10 to midnight, we have films, special events, talkbacks. Tonight we actually paired up with Downtown Goshen Inc. During our Downtown uh, First Fridays, we're going to have the annual Taste of Goshen. Um, so you want to make sure to check that out on Washington Street. And at the same time, we're going to be having a new event called the Taste of the Fest, which we will have, I believe, around 12 different filmmakers that are going to be in six different locations that are mapped out all around downtown so the public can be part of the fest as well. Um, and if you want to look for that map, it would be at the Goshen Theater, if I'm not I'm mistaken. So that box office is open. You can grab the map for the taste of the fest as well. This morning, we have an extra special coffee talk. It's called The Road to the Oscars. It's moderated by festival host Dave Kendall. And it is my pleasure to introduce the 2018 Riverbend Film Festival honorees and Academy Award winners, Rachel Shenton and Chris Overton. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. Uh, and it's an absolute pleasure to be sitting here with Chris and Rachel. And this is your first time in Indiana, right? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Has it been a Has it been a, a good stay so far? It oh, has. Yeah, it's been lovely. It's very peaceful here. They've been over. <laughs> they've been over at the Inn on Fifth, and they've been taken. Been, you've been taken care of by Ken and Karen. Right? We've been taken yeah. care of so well. We have at least three breakfasts every morning because it's <laughs> there's too much choice, so we just go for all of it. Um, and you can see that they're traveling with Oscar and. Uh, how has it been traveling, uh, going through airport security with Oscar? Well, it's, it's very heavy. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we have to take both of them. But if we're going long distance, we just take one. But yeah, um, we've, we've taken it through a few airport scanners, but we're, it's safe to say that American security is definitely the best. Oh in the my world. God, I mean, yeah. nothing gets past you guys, no, seriously. <laughs> Open the case, liquids, Oscar. Everything in there, but yeah, we've been through other airport securities, and it just goes through, and they don't say anything. Which so. is worrying, because yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, what do they say when they see Oscar? Flip well, by on a when it comes when it comes through, it just looks like a very large object, but you can kind of make out that it's sort of a, a person, um, apparently. And so they always go, "Is this an Emmy? Do you have an Emmy in your bag?" <laughs> if you didn't get to see the Silent Child, beautiful movie, and it paired so well. I've heard so many people say that last night it paired really well with Hotel Salvation. So it was it was really nice to, to see those two movies together. So this is called Road to the Oscars, and we're definitely going to talk about that. But I'd love to hear, and you've told me already, but I'd like to hear again how the two of you got together and started working, this working relationship and, and this relationship. <laughs> uh, Hang on a minute. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean you don't have to go into I thought it was a detail. film talk. No. Um, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I've known Chris for years. We worked together on, on a job um, <clears throat> over seven years ago on a TV show in, in England. Um, and. Uh, that, that's how we initially met. We were friends for years, sort of vaguely kept in contact, not really. And then I was out in America, in, in Los Angeles, filming um, a show. And um, he, he came over on holiday, I think, or we, for a wedding or something like that? No, I was, I was trying to uh, you were do pilot wedding. season, wasn't You I? were going to a wedding, though, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I just made that, well, I I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, 
he was struggling with a self tape, so he texted me saying, "Can you help me put myself on tape?" Um, and I did. Went out for sushi, <laughs> and um, and that's how that bit started. So um, and then cut to a year or so later, I was back in LA, and Chris was in London. Um, I FaceTimed him and said, "I've got this really, really good idea for a film." Um, I've been involved in the deaf community for years and years and years, so this is something that's very close to me. I said, I've got an idea for a movie. Um, and he said, I think that's a good idea. You should write that. Um, so I did. Yeah, and, and I read the first draft of the script and was just completely blown away by it. And that was about two years ago. And ever since that day, we've worked solidly day in, day out um, on the film. And now we're here in Riverbend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being here. W the, the two of you have had successful careers as actors and producers for, for a while now. Um, so you wrote this screenplay. Mm -hmm. And then it's like magic happens. <laughs> the two of you have this wonderful project to work with. And then what's next? I mean, yeah, I, I wrote it. The Silent Child was the first thing I've written. Um, so I guess you just feel, I mean, still do, we just feel hugely underqualified. Um, uh, being an actor, you sort of think, oh, God, how, how can I, why, who, why, who am I to write a story? You know, it's your, it's the, this is your very first screenplay, right? Yeah, And absolutely. Chris is very, this is your directorial debut. Yes, it is, yeah. That's, that's, that's a little bit like getting up to bat and hitting a grand slam on the first bit, <laughs> really. Yeah, I think we've set a really unrealistic precedent now to, to live on to. Yeah, where do you go from here? Really? Retirement. We're going to retire. Yeah, okay. um, well, yeah. I've, I've heard you both say that this was the film that absolutely had to be made. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was made through uh, a real grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what that looked like? Sure. Um, well, it was made with a lot of heart. Um, and. Well, yeah. We yeah, and we, I think everybody got on board um, and we wor all worked so hard just because of the, the script and the kind mm. of the message behind it and Rachel's, what she's been doing in the deaf community for well over a decade. So, um, yeah, we, we tried everything, I think, didn't we? We tried to raise the money um, as, as in so many different ways and it, nothing was working and we tried for a long time and then it was like, right, we come to this end of this weird road, and we were like, oh, "Well, we've we've got to we've got to do it." So it was crowdfunding, which we were really scared of because we've heard so many horror stories of you know people ending their campaigns with like a hundred dollars or hundred pounds in on their 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 campaign, and we you set yourself up for rejection, don't you? I suppose. Well, it's just hugely it's hugely exposing because not only are you putting your idea out there. And, it, and wanting people to like it, you're also expecting them or wanting them to part with their hard-earned cash and, and give, you know, to help you make your movie. So it's just so exposing, really. Um, but actually, in hindsight, that was a really good thing to do because of what it kind of did was it allowed us to test the water with our idea and to see if, I, I, I guess, it, it had legs and people bought into it and liked it. And we, thankfully, we had a successful Indiegogo campaign because um, we'd heard so many horror stories. Um, but we were super um, resourceful ourselves. We didn't just wait for people to give us their money and because that felt so weird. Um, so we, we, we created a road show um, called Deaf Not Stupid and we went round to primary schools. Uh, do you say primary schools? Like little schools? Yeah, like, but, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, elementary schools. Um, uh, in, in the UK, um, with, with this sort of deaf awareness workshop where we would teach a little bit of basic sign language, a little bit of deaf, deaf awareness in exchange for a donation. So we were quite resourceful, as well as... Chris's um, mom and dad have a cupcake business. Not anymore. Not anymore. We've bankrupted them. No, we haven't. Um, <laughs> um, but um, he, um, they, they, his mom and dad made cupcakes, and my mom and her partner sold them. <laughs> so um, we raised quite a bit with cupcakes as well. <laughs> and it's interesting you, the, the people you meet along the way. Like, we had donations come from people that we've never met, and uh, they've been a big part of the film, and mm. they've been big backers. So. It's a, it's a real journey, and you really meet some incredible people on the way mm. uh, on, on a crowdfunding campaign. Right. So I wouldn't change the way we did it. I, no. think, it, I think the fight to make it was, is kind of what made it special. Yeah. Well, the performances, I think everyone would agree, who's seen it, uh, the performances are beautiful, absolutely. You're stellar. Thank you. But Macy is 
incredible. How did oh. you go about finding, uh, a f she was four years old at the time? Five at the time. Five, five at the time. Nine, four, yep. And yeah. How did you go about finding a, an amazing five-year-old deaf actor? Facebook, actually. Um, we just did a nationwide search and uh, went to lots of deaf organizations. And then uh, it was actually a Facebook post and uh, people were tagging in Maisie's dad, Gilson. And they said, oh, Maisie's perfect for this. So we just got a really short email. Uh, that we were told to, to, you know, they would email in their photo, their age, and if they knew any sign language. And all its, it, this beautiful photo came through and we said, oh, she looks like Dakota Fanning. And uh, it just said, five years old, uh, fluent in sign language. So we're like, oh, okay. And then, yeah, she walked in the room and just absolutely blew us away. Yeah. I, I felt sorry for all the other kids after. Like, some had come from, like, six hours away. And the, the girl after uh, Maisie came in, and Rachel was just kind of no, like... No, this makes me sound mean. I wasn't. Like, <laughs> no, but we, we kind of... We, we, we did... We did you know, we knew we had yeah. our lead then, um, but I was like, Rachel, this, this girl's come six hours away. Put a smile on your face. No, yeah. it wasn't. That. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that. We see, we'd seen over a hundred children with varying levels of hearing loss, and you know, Maisie came in and just made it so easy. It was an absolute no-brainer. She was going to get the role from when she walked in through the door. So actually, it felt mean seeing other people because I was like. But you're not going to get it. It's like, still already giving it to yeah. somebody else. It was hard. <laughs> it was difficult because you, when you've already made up your mind, but I suppose that happens in casting all the time. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. just don't know what stage you're at if you walk into a room. But, yeah. So you won Best Short Film at the Rhode Island International Film Fest last year, yeah. which made you eligible for the Academy Awards. Can you tell us what the process is like after that? Um, after the win at the uh, after Rhode you Island? Become, after you become an, uh, eligible, what... What takes place after that? Are you just waiting for the next? Well, we, it's, it's a, just filling out the form, which was really <laughs> surreal. We were just like, <laughs> even getting into an Oscar qualifying festival, we was, you know, we'd never done the festival run, never been to a film festival at all. So when we got into uh, an Oscar qualifying festival, we were like, you know, I remember doing a we did a screening, didn't we? And we said, we, we announced it like we've just won an Oscar. We were like, we've just got into an Oscar <laughs> qualifying film festival. And people were like, <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, we, we know. We, um, we celebrated every stage. Yeah, because it's like, really nice. Because actually getting into a film festival is an achievement because there are, there are so many submissions and they do only select some yeah. movies. And right. that again was validation that our movie was half decent, which is amazing for us. So and they had, what, 6,000 submissions? Yeah. So we were just like, wow, you know, we're really, really pleased. And then we, we didn't expect to win that. Maisie won Best Actress there. So when that happened, we were like, oh, God, maybe we won't win that. So we were kind of like, oh, well, that's okay. And then, then we won. And um, my speech was terrible. Um, <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I couldn't speak, could I? I was like, uh, uh. It's terrible. It was a bit embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope nobody ever gets to see the Rhode Island acceptance speech. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, and then, and then we were calling our family and our crew and just saying we, we can submit to the Oscars. And that... I said, no, we never thought anything more of it, really. We yeah. submitted. It's and like you get the paperwork yeah. and it has like the Academy stamp on it. And obviously, being a Brit, we have the BAFTAs, which is great. But like the Oscars is like this mythical thing that uh, so we're just in Hollywood so where it's away, sunny yeah. and everybody's yeah. beautiful. Like, you just <laughs> never think of that. Um, so it was weird even submitting our stuff. And so once you sent it off, then you wait for a whole, a good chunk of time, actually, and you forget about it because you're doing other things. So we totally forgot about it. And then, What's that? Yeah, we were screening at other festivals during yeah. that time, and we, we were doing very well. We were winning different awards, yeah. and, which was really nice. And then you never, you just, I don't know, you, you, yeah, uh, it, yeah, you we? don't expect to hear anything or whatever. So, and we actually didn't know the time frame or when we would hear. So then we're sat on the sofa one night, and then um, our producer um, just said, "Check emails, Academy," <laughs> um, oh, on, yeah, on like, the WhatsApp yeah. group. So we had to look at the emails, and then we had a we had an email from the Academy just before Christmas saying. Um, we're shortlisted in, in ten, the top ten movies or whatever, um, and then that, that they were going to announce that to the public the next day. So it was like that's it, we'd won then. That's it. It mm. the, we never went yeah. any further. We were so we happy with that. We couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe that. And um, because uh, it's the winners of all those Oscar qualifying festivals get put into a pot, and I mm. think this year was the biggest uh, pot, and it was 165 yeah. films this mm. year. Um, but to get to it, just submit and to be like long listed, this was we were just so happy with that. And then, 
um, yeah, we, we couldn't believe it. It was crying, more tears, and then... Yeah. then Just the, from Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. That's true. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the, the nomination. Well, we're, we're grateful that you've been celebrating every, every little step along the way. And actually, the next clip that we're going to play is the, the moment that you found out that you were nominated for an Academy Award. Oh, God, it's uh. so embarrassing. And so this is an, in, this is an intimate look into that, into that, uh, that day. And while he's queuing it up, the, the characters, the characters, they're real people. Uh, but but the, the, uh, this is the, Macy and her family and, and your DP? And a, a DOP, yeah. Director yeah, yeah. of Photography, yeah. okay. <clears throat> Rachel was right. Let <laughs> <laughs> me just go. <laughs> I love her. Oh, she's so funny. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> I've been editing all of these reels that you're seeing, and I queued that clip up for Carrie Lee the other day, and I knew that we were both going to be crying at the end of it. It's like our, it's a catharsis for us. We like to do that occasionally. It's a therapy thing. Um, 
And just so you know, we don't have a video camera in the corner of our lounge all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. We were just we were told by um, Shorts TV, who did the Oscar package, they said, "Can you film it?" And we were like, "No way!" <laughs> we were like, "We can't do we that." Why was it we don't? Get if nominated. it doesn't go our way, it'd be the worst felt, video ever. Yeah, it felt really awkward doing that, but we're glad we did now because it's well, a nice memory. And you forget all about yeah. it actually once it's been rolling for a while. Like you just don't even think mm. that it's there. So I was great to pull that out of your DCP, and I I, I was just like, oh, "This could be intimate." Thank you guys very much for providing that for us because it really was a special, special moment that we got to share. Yeah. That's not public. Not many people have seen that. Right. So. Yeah. Right. So th this question's for you, Rachel. You wrote this screenplay because you wanted, it was in you, and you wanted to bring some, some real awareness to the, the deaf and hard of hearing community. What was, the, what was that moment? What did that moment mean to you? I mean, yes, my, my lovely dad uh, lived the last two years of his life profoundly deaf, so this subject's extremely close to my heart, but it's also, it's a silent disability. You can't see it and it's not life-threatening, and so this, this, this flies under everyone's radar unless it's touched your life in some way, and I knew that it was a story that needed to be told, um, and the nomination I knew would mean that we would just get the chance to put this in front of a mainstream audience. We knew that if we got nominated our package, along with the other nominees, would get shown in over 600 cinemas in the US, which is, it's huge for us um, and, and huge for the message. So um, that's why it really, it really meant just even more that we, I've been involved in campaigns, like political campaigns and lobbying in parliament and all that kind of thing for years and years and years. And, and I've never had the kind of response to something like we have from the film. I, I think just because it's just such an incredibly powerful medium and it's, because it's emotive, it's not, you know, it doesn't mm. feel political, it's not statistics, it's not, it's just people, and I think people connect to people. So um, that, that, that just meant the world to us, that we were actually going to yeah. be able to put this in front of, in front of a, a large mainstream audience that wouldn't have been exposed to it otherwise. So. Right. So, Chris, this, this is, you had fantastic actors to work with. Yeah. And a beautiful screenplay. And it's beautifully directed and, and amazingly shot. Thank you. What did, what did you have to tap into to make sure that on the other end you were going to get something that was a brilliant piece of art? I just think, I think the, the script itself uh, made it a lot easier and, and all the actors. And I think all the work we did in pre-production, uh, I think the film was made in pre-production, you know, with the, the script and uh, the actors that we had. And then, um, yeah, the shoot was just this manic blur. And it was uh, the puzzle was slowly starting to come together, and then um, I remember seeing the first cut of it, and our hearts oh, just dropped. We were like, "Oh God!" We were like, oh, "I we thought like we did better than that." You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was yeah, it was really strange. And then um, Ali, who's the DOP, who was basically overseeing the editing, he's just a, a genius, and uh, we really made the film in the edit really told the story and, and there was so many uh, there's a lot of footage and a lot of uh, scenes that got cut from the yeah. film but um, and we, we hung on to them uh, I don't know maybe because we fought so hard to get the money to make them we, we could have saved a lot of money I think <laughs> yeah um, yeah so I think it was it was just like it was a process it was a long process and it was um, it, yeah it just slowly came together and and we, we got, the, the film was about 25 minutes for a, for a quite a long time. And I think the, the film really came together in the edit when we just, you know, bit the bullet and got it under 20 minutes. And it felt like the pace was right. Things were happening at the right time. Um, yeah, does that, that was a bit of a ramble, sorry. No, that's great. And, and <coughs> so filmmakers often make a short film in hopes that it becomes, it's like a seed they plant, and then they water it, and they hope it becomes mm. something else. You, so you guys are watering the seed at this point in time, right? Because you're hoping, and it will happen, that the silent child becomes yeah. fill in the blank. Mm. A feature film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a quiz. <laughs> so yeah, so you, what, what's, what, what is next then for the silent child? The, what's the process from here? Are you writing the feature length screenplay, Rachel? Uh, yeah, we're very <clears throat> early in, in sort of pre-production, uh, but we're really fortunate because um, uh, an Oscar does help things. Um, and, and so um, we, we've, we've been really lucky that um, we've had a lot of great meetings and a lot of people that want to sort of help us uh, make it and develop it. So um, at the moment we're having a lot of meetings and just kind of deciding who we want to work with, which sounds 
terribly arrogant who we're deciding who we want to work with. But um, <laughs> I don't mean it like that. Um, I, I just mean we're very fortunate that we, we have a lot of people that are interested in helping us tell yeah. the story. So uh, I guess it's just about making the right choices and then we, and then we, we full steam ahead and, and make a longer version, really. And we want to make it... We want to replicate <coughs> as much as we can, and it's a completely different thing making a feature to a short, but we really do want to take what the, the, the things that made that special and... Uh, you no know, more cupcakes, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have to do that anymore. Well, I don't think we should do that right. again. Well, so everybody here knows that you won the Oscar now. You took, you, you flew from England, you took Maisie to L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, and all the family, the yeah. And the family, yeah. and you all, how long were you there? Uh, we were there for quite a while, and we uh, landed. Three weeks, two yeah, weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Over, okay. over over two weeks because obviously Maisie's uh, um, only six, and her family, her uh, little sister's even younger. Uh, brother's only a year older, so we just didn't want them to be jet lagged for the mm. awards mm. because she slept through her Rhode Island world premiere. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we didn't want that to happen again. Um, so she managed to stay awake, and she yeah. she'd fully uh, you know changed to the time difference. Yeah. Well. We've got a behind-the-scenes documentary uh, that we can watch about Maisie going to the Oscars, and so that's the la that's going to wrap it up for us today. Okay, great. And that's where we'll end. So, Jeff, can you queue up <coughs> the last video? <laughs> That's me, Mum. The Oscar goes to the silent child. <laughs> 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 oh God, hello. Um, I um, made a promise to our six-year-old lead actress that I'd sign this speech. And my hands are shaking a little bit, so I, I, I apologise. Um, thank you. Um, our movie is about a deaf child being born into a world of silence. It's not exaggerated or sensationalized for the movie. This is happening. Millions of children all over the world live in silence and face communication barriers and particularly access to education. 
So deafness is a, a silent disability. You can't see it and it's not life-threatening. So I want to say the biggest thank yous to the Academy for allowing us to put this in front of a mainstream audience. Now, this was such a team effort, so I've got to say thank you to our parents for making and selling cupcakes. So we could uh, <laughs> finish and uh, help us finish the film. Thanks to everyone who backed our Indiegogo campaign. Thank you, Vanessa Johnston, Terry Murphy, all our executive producers, Danny Ulmerod, everyone at Slick Sherrills and Slick Films, uh, all our incredible cast and crew: Maisie Sly, Julie Foy, Rebecca Harris, Ali Farahani. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. But lastly, my fiance, Rachel Shenton. Uh, it's really your hard work for the last 12 years that has really made this project authentic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Um...